Hi guys, it is an absolutely spectacularly gorgeous, I'm talking an over-the-top beautiful fall of 2023 night. It is a Saturday night here, and uh, the full moon on the rise out the window. Are you enjoying this gorgeous full moon here on, it is September 30th. 2023 and I am looking forward to being bathed in moonlight last night and uh, looking out this window and I don't know if this is uh, germane to anything but what may or may not be my very very first memory of my entire life uh, and, and I have always chalked it up to being the only memory I have of, uh, this shitbag known as my father, who died when I was nine months old. So, if this, if this, whatever this thing in my brain is, is my only memory of my father. Uh, it had to have happened before I was nine months old. So this is the memory. I am lying in my crib up uh, in the room where I grew up in uh, Atlanta, Georgia. I'm lying in my crib and the window, my, my crib was along the east facing window. It was a two-story house, so it was the second story east facing window. And I was lying in my crib on my back looking at the full moon rising out of the window. And uh, being, and I, and I attach, I don't know whether it's fear or wonder or what it was, but I, I remember seeing this bright white disk of light outside of the, of my bedroom window, which obviously was, was the full moon on the rise, and then all I have is some fleeting little image, I mean some hazy, shadowy image of it would have been actually over my right shoulder, not my left shoulder, that my father came into the bedroom while I was looking at this light outside my bedroom window and just to basically, uh, I guess this was one of the times he was not trying to kill me, but I remember this shadowy figure coming into my room and, you know, basically to calm me down, that, that light outside of my window, that bright white disc outside my window was nothing to worry about. It was just the full moon. And I honestly do not even know if that's my first memory or not. I have carried this around my entire life. I am assuming the light outside my window was the full moon on the rise in the eastern sky. I am assuming the shadowy figure who came into the room was my own father. This is how I choose to uh, frame that memory that may or may not have ever happened. And then uh, I have no other memories in my life. I guess the next memory is when I was two years old. 
uh, you know, my, my first clear memory, but that's another story that has nothing to do with lights outside the window and shadowy figures entering my uh, bedroom. So I don't have any idea, guys, if that has anything to do with my lifelong interest in UFOs and space aliens. Uh, no idea. Now, as uh, some of you know, I have somewhat jokingly, although it was no joke for 22 years, uh, was abducted by space aliens for 22 years. I've told the story many times. Maybe I will rehash it here on this channel at some point now that I've started Space Alien uh, Saturday. But uh, this, I'm, I'm going to try to make this channel a little bit more more, I don't know, what's the word, not accessible or available to uh, people particularly who have not ever been abducted by a space alien. And as I, I'm probably going to make this disclaimer in every video I make, just in case anyone stumbles across this. One more time, this is just my, dis my uh, disclaimer my amplification and clarification, I have never seen a UFO in my entire life. I sure as shit have never seen a space alien. And one more disclaimer, I think that 99.9% .9 of the UFO space alien literature you find here on YouTube uh, in other places is unadulterated horse shit. And what I'm going to attempt to do here on this channel is try to help you sift through the garbage to reject the 99.9% .9 of unadulterated horse shit uh, out there on this subject. And hopefully, if I find something that comes along under my radar that I think belongs in that 0.1% of information on this subject that I think you should pay attention to, I'm going to call your attention to it. And uh, I also need to add here that I have been out of this whole discussion for 23 years. I walked away from this rabbit hole 23 years ago. I have paid virtually zero attention up until the last year or so. I completely tuned out this noise. That's what it was. It, it was noise. Uh, and I just made up my mind in the year 2000, when is uh, the night before I moved to Austin, Texas at age 40, uh, when I kicked the space aliens' asses goodbye and have never been abducted by a space alien ever since I kicked the little fuckers' asses goodbye. Uh, you can find that story on here. I will tell it some other time. So I have been out of the loop for 23 years, guys. So I'm sure there are all sorts of, uh, of, of researchers that I have never heard of, books I have never read, documentaries I have never looked at, and I am asking for anybody out there treating this subject seriously uh, and agrees with me that 99.9% .9 of the stuff out there is horseshit, please, if you have a brain and are seriously interested 
and figuring out what is going on with the, with the most bizarre phenomenon probably on the planet today. Please, would you, uh, and, and in the comments would be a good place. Uh, by all means, I want people to recommend uh, if you see a YouTube video or read a book or know of some researcher uh, who's come along in the past 23 years since I slammed the door shut on this, on this nonsense, by all means, share it with me. So anyway, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of like picking up in midstream after taking a 23-year hiatus uh, off of this, uh, you know, studying this subject. So, uh, and so to start off, I want to uh, give a big round of applause to good old Netflix, good old Netflix for this new series that they. Uh, entered, I think it came out on Wednesday, called Encounters, simply called Encounters. It's a four-part documentary series. Each uh, episode is about 50 minutes, like li a little shy of an hour, each one of these episodes. And there's, and there's four episodes, and with the possible exception of the fourth one, uh, and e even then, I, we, we, we will get to the fourth one in a minute. I'll, I'll just go down the line, but if, if you are just starting down this road or you've been down this road and you're getting sick and tired, as I am, about the unadulterated horseshit uh, surrounding uh, space aliens, uh, I highly recommend Encounters on Netflix. It, it was probably, with the possible exception of the fourth episode, the single most intelligent uh, discussion of this phenomenon that, that I have ever seen. It, uh, it was an absolute breath of fresh air. I am hoping that this is a sign uh, that other uh, documentary filmmakers and other networks uh, other than, than Netflix are going to start taking this subject seriously and start uh, you know, giving this subject the serious attention it deserves. It, 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 it's time to, it, it, it is beyond time to figure out what the hell is going on here. And as one of the guys in the documentary uh, who was interviewed, I can't remember, there were a bunch of people they interviewed, you know, he was claiming he thinks, I think, what did he say, that in the next 20 years, we are going to know the truth about this, implying that we were going to have a body. Not a rumor of a body uh, in, in some government vault in, in some military base underground. It is going to be out there incontrovertible proof that we have a body of a being from another planet and it's going to blow the fucking lid off. And it, it, it is past time to cut the crap and let it be, let it be known what's going on. And uh, so if you are going... To, to, to devote three and a half hours of your life to this, starting with encounters on Netflix, is uh, you could not sp spend a better three and a half hours. So uh, just real quickly, 
I mean, you can find all this. So part one starts off in the good old state of Texas about um, the Stevensville, Texas sightings uh, back in, uh, I believe, the 1990s when I was in the middle of all this. So it's devoted mostly to that. Uh, part two, which I'm going to come back to, is uh, mostly devoted to uh, the sighting and, and Lord, I think 1994, it's not important, in uh, Zimbabwe, that sighting. The third part is talking about this rash of sightings in Wales, I think in the late 70s, this rash of sightings of, of UFOs and space aliens in Wales, and then they end up, and I, I had never heard this, talking about the connection <coughs> between UFOs <coughs> and uh, UFOs in both nuclear power and uh, nuclear uh, nuclear arms. It, it, it's about the, the UFO connection between the nuclear industry and they are focusing on these sightings right after the Fukushima disaster this rash of UFO sightings although I don't think there were any aliens the fourth part doesn't talk about aliens very much, but it does. Anyway, I'll just go. Uh, I will come back to the fourth one in a minute. So, I would, if I were uh, lining these up in best to worst, it would be part two is the main one, and you can watch all of these individually, you don't, you know what I'm saying, you don't have to start uh, with chapter one and go through chapter, I mean, you can watch any one, two, three, or four of them, uh, but if you're going to watch only one of them, make it part two, and then I would say part one is the second best, the Texas ones, part three, keep it in the third, and part four, it's not that important if you watch it or not. Uh, but, so I mainly want to talk about part two, which is, uh, you know, ostensibly about the uh, the sightings from the school children of this UFO in these space aliens uh, in the schoolyard in Zimbabwe, uh, which, which is a, a damn interesting story. I don't, I don't care how you cut it. It's just an interesting story. So essentially, 60 children Conveniently enough, there were no adults, not one adult. Uh, there were 60, which I find a little hard to believe, but apparently there were 62 completely unsupervised young, I'm talking like eight-year-old school children, uh, completely unsupervised out on the school grounds, conveniently enough, not one adult was there to witness this. And uh, so the, the story about the sighting is, uh, you know, starts out about the, the sighting itself. But the reason I really want you to watch it uh, is because who it talks about a lot, who it introduces, and there is my number one hero of the uh, the UFO space alien field, and that is Dr. John 
Mac. They uh, probably about half of the the episode is actually about John Mack's research uh, into the alien abduction uh, phenomenon. Um, John Mack, for any of for those of you who don't know, he was a Pulitzer Prize winning tenured Harvard professor. He was a a basically in the school of psychiatry. He was a he was a you know classically trained MD in psychiatry. Uh, you know, a very well-respected uh, tenured professor in the Harvard uh, Medical School, and I'm not sure where he, in the middle of all this, where he won the Pulitzer Prize, but John Mack is not some Fliberty gibbet, okay? This guy is not some dingling like, uh, you know, some of the other famous people, at least back when I was still paying attention to this. John Mack was always my number one hero in this. And he, uh, before he was, and I'm not saying this was a conspiracy like a lot of people, uh, before he got conveniently run over and killed uh, by a drunk driver. Uh, how convenient to the people wanting to silence John Mack. And there were a shitload of people who wanted to silence John Mack. But John Mack, before he was so conveniently uh, silenced by the whoever wanted to silence him, uh, wrote two books, and his most famous one was simply called Abducted. And then he had this follow-up book, uh, pretty, oh, good Lord, I think it's called Passport to the Cosmos, which was a follow-up to Abducted, which got very little uh, little play in the UFO community, but in a lot of ways from the Doomer, uh, Passport to the Cosmos has the most solid connection to the Doomosphere. So in uh, Abducted, what, so, so John Mack, uh, just um, to, to make a long story short, you know, he started out as a huge skeptic. He just thought that this was obviously a psychiatric condition, that anybody claiming that they were seeing space aliens being abducted by them, whatever, were obli obviously mentally ill, uh, schizophrenic, psychos. Anybody claiming uh, certainly that they had been abducted by a space alien or hell even claiming that they had seen a space alien was absolute batshit crazy. So he wanted to figure out this psychological imbalance or this psychiatric disorder and the more he studied it uh, he, he, he was forced into the conclusion that uh, these people were not batshit crazy, that they had suffered severe trauma. These were normal, average, you know, intelligent people, educated with careers, families, whatever, that had this shit show up in their life and they were just completely traumatized, their entire lives traumatized by this, and, and he came in, and he had no choice but to face the music. And um, what did he say? He worked with right about a hundred of these abductees. Uh, obviously, I wish to hell I had met John Mack. I don't think I would have 
I I would not have, you know, made the cut with John Mack. Uh, so he he tells their their stories in Abducted. He just basically tells the stories, and then Passport to the Cosmos. Uh, I know I'm getting off of the Netflix series. Uh, I, I'm just going off into books that you need to read. Abducted and Passport to the Cosmos by John Mack. You need to read both of them, especially if you are a doomer. You need to read the second book because what it talks about is kind of like follow-up with these people. What ended up happening to these people? after being, uh, you know, abducted by space aliens frequently over a period of, I don't know, 22 years, what he saw over and over and over again, these people from all walks of life, I don't know, maybe some real estate agents were in there, what they ended up doing in one form or another is they abandoned their normal lives and just basically pulled the plug on their walked away from the you know the cultural paradigm and what they did in one form or another they became doomsday prophets they basically started preaching about the end of the world. That we, you know, that this planet is collapsing, that humans are destroying the planet. I don't believe in humans. And over and over again, that these people who have, uh, on whatever level, uh... Uh, been abducted by space aliens. However that was played out in their lives, uh, how many of them ended up turning into environmental alarmist, doomsday prophets, and the chronicler of the collapse of a planet. And, and, and guys... I read this book probably it would have been uh, probably would have been the mid 90s I read this book uh, about these uh, y y you know when I was tr kind of in a real estate career I was a real estate investor and a house flipper among other things and when I read this book I, uh, I had been abducted by space aliens for 22 years. I came across this book thinking this is very interesting. And 10 or 12 years later, I became a doomsday prophet, an environmental alarmist, and the chronicler of the collapse of a planet. I need to go back and, and read it. it. It's just like, I, I mean, the, the parallels in my own life are downright spooky. Uh, that there's something about this, whatever plane of reality it is on, and even the school children... Uh, the eight-year-old school children who encountered these aliens were, uh, were getting the message, the, the, the same message of environmental destruction, how the planet was going to hell in a handbasket. So, if you want to uh, see an excellent introduction on John Mack. Watch part two of uh, Encounters on the Zimbabwe. Uh, both, both, both for the story itself and, uh, and, and once you 
get a little bio on John Mack, then get out there and read Abducted and Passport to the Cosmos, and you will be well into the rabbit hole. Those are, are must-reads. Abducted to the Space Alien rabbit hole is like overshoot to the Doomer rabbit hole. John Mack is the, uh, well, I, I would say John Mack is the uh, Bill Reese or William Catton. Uh, what, 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 what William Reese and, um, and Catton are to the Doomosphere is what John Mack is to the, uh, the, the space alien rabbit hole. The guy's credentials are rock solid. He has the best source credibility uh, of any of these researchers that you're going to find, unless another one has come along in the last 23 years, and I would like to hear about that. And... Uh, and then after you finish that one, then the, then the Texas one is good. It's got a few things I would have I would have trimmed out of it. The one from Wales is pretty good. Uh, and the the one from sort of about Fukushima, I, I mean it's okay. And uh, this one thing which I would like to study more a very short scene about Chernobyl was talking about you know after Chernobyl went how this UFO and I guess the Geiger counters or whatever you call those whatever you call those little things uh, were were reading like 3,000 whatever's how this UFO came and hovered right over Chernobyl and, and sent this beam of light down on top of Chernobyl and the radiation uh, dropped from like 3,000 whatevers to like 800 in a space of three minutes. And then a pretty well-known case, and it's more than one, uh, about how these UFOs have shut down nuclear missile, they've disabled nuclear missile launches. And they have these high-ranking military officials going on record is, is how, you know, where in these missile silos, where we have our missiles pointed at Russia or wherever, and that these UFOs can come in there and kill the launch pad, and uh, that that's a pretty interesting story. Uh, but the problem with uh, part four, so you have the most intelligent uh, four-part UFO documentary I have ever had the pleasure of seeing in my entire life. I plan to watch. Uh, at least parts one and two uh, a second time. And then, in the last, I don't even know if it's the last ten minutes. It might be in the last five minutes that I guess they had to do this to get Netflix to agree to, uh, to, to put the series on. Out of nowhere, they pull out the most unadulterated horseshit, I mean, jaw dropping, jaw dropping, unadulterated horseshit. This some fucking little goddamn uh, little pie in the sky, little human centric. Uh, I, I, I don't know where this shit came from 
out of nowhere and they did everything they could in the last five to ten minutes uh, of part four of this documentary pretty much destroyed the entire four-part series. They, it, I, I mean, it was, it, 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 it was dog-choking vomit what they, what they uh, puked up in the last few minutes. I'm not even going to insult uh, my intelligence or yours. I, I, I was very disappointed, to put it mildly, uh, and just try not to let those last few minutes uh, sour you on uh, this excellent documentary. And with that, that will be uh, episode one of Saturday Space Alien Follies here on Humpty Dumpty Tribe. I, I'm thinking uh, we might be starting a new YouTube channel for the few of us uh, wanting to have this serious discussion, I might be starting, uh, you know, once I, I get a group of the 12 or 13 of you that want to hear this shit, uh, we will see if, uh, uh, if I'm going to feel like starting uh, a new channel so I don't have to uh, upset you doomers who think I'm uh, <laughs> that you're losing ham bone around the bend. Anyway, I think I'm going to go back and rewatch part two while I still can. Bye, guys.